Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming. We're glad you're here. We wanted to host this webinar today to make sure that our clients are aware of and are taking full advantage of all of the big efficiencies that we have here at Express. And also give everybody an overview of some of the latest time-saving changes that we've made to your UI. You've probably noticed as recruiters and processors, managers, owners, no matter what the role you play in your company, we know that you guys are really busy, your teams are busy, uh, and you know, you're always looking for ways to make the most of your time. So we're hoping to help in that avenue. Making our services convenient and time efficient is a big priority here. So we want to make sure that everybody's in the loop, if you're not already there, and that you can get the most out of your day. So before we begin, just first, a few little bits of housekeeping here. First of all, again, a big welcome to the webinar. This webinar will be recorded and sent to you. Please know that if for any reason we do lose connectivity, the webinar will be rescheduled and you'll receive a notification so that you can re-register. Also remember your phones are muted during the presentation. So if anybody comes into your office or you get a phone call, don't worry, it's not gonna disturb anything. Secondly, we're trying something a little new here. You can submit your questions anytime throughout the presentation and you can do so just using the text box under the questions section in your panel under questions. So this way you don't forget to ask, you don't have to save it till the end, and then we'll be able to answer any questions that, you know, that come up as we're on topic that they pertain to, which will also help other audience members as well. So like I said, we'll try to get to them as we see them, but if for some reason we're not able to get to them right away, we'll of course address them at the end of the webinar. And finally, you will see two handouts. Under the handout section in your panel, if you scroll or go over there and you click the down arrow, you can see your two handouts. One is a 10th Street Services Overview, and the others are Solutions Catalog. And both of these you, might, you may find helpful as it provides a quick and then a more detailed listing, respectively, of all the services that we have here at 10th Street today. So if you want to go ahead and just download those real quick before you forget, go ahead and feel free. And we're going to be jumping around a little bit today, but I've tried to put an order around this. I started with the fun stuff. So we've got a lot going on with this slide, but that's okay, it's a good time. So let's start from the beginning. What you see on the right when you first sign into your dashboard, so this is your dashboard, and here's how you can make it work for you. On your right, you see the sidebar search to view that you can, you can use to easily find your applicants and jump straight to their record without having to actually go to the big search tab, which will serve you better for your more advanced searches or can be useful for bulk reassignments, scheduling communications, exporting records, configuring drip emails, or bulk ordering your MVRs. But I digress, back to the sidebar search. Should you enter in details about a subject that is not in your dashboard, Express will ask you if you'd like to create a new record, which takes you straight to the phone app. So right here, you'll see this, you'll see this message right here, and it'll take you right to the phone app, and it autofills the information that you place in the search. So it's super convenient. So for example, if you enter in Smith with an SSN of 12345 and that subject doesn't exist in your system, then it, it'll give you an option of starting a phone app, which will then populate that app with the last name of Smith and a social security number of 12345 Now the big search, which I'm calling it just so you can differentiate, under the one under the search tab will also do this, but this panel here just allows a quick and easy access to this functionality, so you can start filling out driver applications even faster. And then Quick Link is the latest convenience we've added, which allows you to essentially create a collection of bookmarks here from all of the favorite places that you frequent in your dashboard. So your favorite reports and any service tools, which are found under the Tools tab, and the Accounts tools, which are under the Manage tab, all can be added here to this Quick Links section here beneath your uh, Quick Search. So, you can get everything right in front of you in one place. You would just simply, if you find something that you like, a report or a tool, you would click the link icon here to add a report to your tool to the quick links. And then you would use the directional tab here once it's on there to move it around to where you want it to be. So whatever location is convenient for you. And we have had a few questions about this change since we made this UI change in that this little thing right here, this little note looking guy, you can tell the difference between your standard reports that 10th Street issues you and the custom reports that you build in your report wizard by looking at this 
thing. If it's gray, it means it's a report wizard report. And if it's uh, just a clear one or a white one, gray one, sorry, a light gray one, then that means it's a standard report. So that's one way to tell the difference. And then three, the third thing is you can save your searches now. Have you seen this yet? It's kind of been here for a little bit, but we see people using it a lot. And I just wanted to throw it in here. This lets you save the searches you frequently perform so that you can get back to your results set faster without having to re-enter all the filters and dates and things. So this is a favorite of recruiters who often pull subjects based on different statuses and is also really useful if you commonly use the search form things like we mentioned before like the, for bulk reassignments or configuring your females or bulk, bulk ordering your MVRs or things like that. So these are all three different kinds of ways to make your dashboard work for you. So it's laid out in the way that is just the most convenient for you so you can get your work done faster. And uh, next, once you're done with creating or updating that driver's application, let's move on to one of the musts of processing a driver, which is employment verification. So one of our biggest conveniences we've added to Express can be found in the Exchange Process tab in Express. So you're already used to Exchange helping you quickly manage all your past due verifications and easily being able to resend requests for email, network, or fax. But now, with this auto request button, you can processors can gain even bigger efficiency and productivity. It allows them to do order everything at once, which just saves a ton of time thinking and a ton of mouse clicks. So here's how this works. If the employer has a lightning bolt here next to their name, that means that they, you've made a request previously and that you can easily just re-request it and any others that have a lightning bolt all at once just by clicking the green exchange auto request. So it grabs all of your employer and education information and allows you to request everything just in one easy click. So reorders are way simpler. And in the preferences tab, if you're worried about it, you can actually set preferences that make sense for how your company operates so that every time the auto request button is clicked, the order includes only what you need, just requests for employment, drug and alcohol, or and or accident information. So easy breezy. And so if you weren't aware of this, or if you're not sure whether or not your processors are using this, please show it to them because it's gonna save them a ton of time in their everyday work. If you need more information, there's a blog and a webinar on the website entirely devoted to Exchange 2.0, um, and your account manager is always available to answer any questions you might have or that their processors may have as well. I'm gonna try to include a link right here to the blog and the webinar so you can get to it really easily. Let's see if this is gonna let me do this. Um, yes, under the chat, I'm gonna include this here and then I can chat it over to you to share, so you can link to that. All right, now I have a surprise for you because I forgot to introduce somebody who's on the phone with me, which is Kim Taken, who's the Director of Client Services. Kim, are you there? I am here. Okay, good. <laughs> I just kind of rushed right into that. So Kim is here with me. She's gonna help me answer any questions that may come in, which I haven't seen any yet. So. Just make sure that you throw those in there whenever you have one, and we will both get do our best to answer those. So, uh, speaking of preferences, though, let's just take a quick look at these two notification preferences that you can find under your preferences tab. We wanted to make sure that you knew these were here. Sometimes you'll want to start ordering PSPs or MVRs, background checks, and all that good stuff while you're waiting for the verifications to return. And uh, we get have quite a few clients who get a ton of reminders and they end up feeling kind of spammy sometimes just by the sheer number of them. Then they do feel helpful. So in that case, for that reason, I just wanted to draw your attention to these particular preference settings right here. The first one is what application type, if any, you prefer to be notified, like when a new application is received, and you can get those notifications when an Intel app is, is received, a signature, both or none. And then the second preference allows you to to choose whether or not you would like to be notified when a background screening notification from higher right has returned or a PSP has returned. So just those two for now, you can allow or suppress those. So if you don't want to receive these email notifications, just keep this in mind that these are here. Here's where you can turn them off. Oh, and Kim, probably I think wanted to add a, a something here about another notification. 
Yeah, I mean, first of all, you should check out the Preferences tab in general. If you haven't been to the Preferences tab, it's along the top row of tabs over towards the right. And there's a, once you're in the Preferences tab, there's Express Preferences and there's Exchange Preferences. And there's quite a few different things you can set. And once you make a setting in the Preferences tab, it only changes the way things look for you. So it's not, you don't have to worry about it changing it for everybody else that's using the system. It just changes it for you. But there's also uh, a popular area that you can change the way the subject view looks. So if you wanted certain tags to show up always in the subject view box when they're assigned with a value, say like maybe you always wanted to see the orientation date tag to the bottom left of the subject view box, or if you wanted, you know, an additional one, maybe orientation location, employee ID number, things like that. If there's some common tags that you always want to see when they're assigned in that subject view box, there's a section for subject view in the Express Preferences tab where you can set those tag preferences. So it will always show you the items that you select when you're looking at the subject view box. A lot of people find that really handy. But there's also several other things in there that you know people like and it might improve your experience working in the dashboard, make things a little more streamlined for you. Okay, cool. Yeah, so definitely check out your preferences tabs. I think those get overlooked a little bit. But moving right along, back to business. Uh, so on to some really cool tools that will help you save time in searching for those drivers you need to reconnect with. The reconnect tool is here to help you do that. So let's say you got your driver's accident report back and you discovered that she's not eligible to drive right now. But no big deal, just slap on a reconnect date on her record so you can connect, contact her when she is eligible. So in this industry, it's all about timing, as you know, and since qualified drivers are in constant demand, experienced recruiters and drivers both understand that a no most often just means not right now. So in most cases, drivers who aren't eligible at the time they submit an application will become eligible at some point in the future. Mike has his 21st birthday coming up. Sally will have the required three years of experience in July, and the violation on Joe's and VR will fall up next year. Just some examples that you might want to use this tool for. This, the reconnect tool saves you a ton of time by no longer having to track the same thing that in a spreadsheet or a notepad. Because even with your best intentions, you're just not gonna, you're just gonna get too busy to remember where you kept that list or if it's even accurate anymore. So all you do is you would just put a reconnect date, which is just a subject tag, onto the subject record. You can also put an optional Reconnect reason here if you want to, to remember why you're going to reach out to that person or what it was that's making them um, um, eligible at this point. And then you can, it pops up on your homepage in a report fashion, resorts it, by de it sorts by default by the reconnect date, and then you can either just reach out by text or pulse message, you can call them, um, and yeah, makes it really easy. So keep that one in mind. And if you're not familiar with the Focus tab, then this slide's for you. Focus tab is full of reports that give your data, clear visual definition, and some analysis around the, the performance of some of your favorite 10th Street services. So you can control which reports you want to see, and you can focus on the data that's important to you. And with the zoom bar here, you can select actually a specific range of values for an up close to detailed look at your data. This is just one little piece of functionality that's really cool. So if you haven't checked that out, uh, do, because once you set that range, you can drag the zoom bar to keep the range, yet move the focus on to neighboring sets. So go there and check out your application volume report. I think that's the one. There's several that have it, but definitely you'll have that one if you don't have the others. And you can kind of play around with that. It's just a really cool way to look at your data. Um, so these reports just save you time. As everything, like all your reporting around the services you use every day, it's all in one place. So that's where you can focus all your attention. Um, this allows you to quickly and conveniently see your application volume by source, which we mentioned, and over time, along with a myriad of other reports. So you can see your job store orders, your forms and onboarding history, refer friend referral data, uh, Intella app now stats and texting, and then your reconnect data that we just discussed in the previous slide, that's, that has a focus report too. And they're even color coded, so you can tell by service category, uh, or you can tell they're color. Sorry, they're color coded by service category to help you organize the report. If you wanted to do that, you can use the arrow keys to make them bigger, or you can drag them around using this big arrow. 
and this little arrow, up and down arrow is right here. Um, so they're color coded by service category uh, by recruiting, onboarding, safety, and marketing. And so as we add new services, expect more widget opportunities, like Origins. Origins is coming soon, so be on the lookout. And, and let us know what you think about these focus reports and really anything that we're discussing here today. Today, I didn't. I actually failed to introduce myself as well, but my name is Leah Kelly. I do the marketing communications here at 10th Street. And, and you can email me at leah.kelly at 10 streetcom or just write back to one of your webinar reminders and it will come, it'll come that way too. And those are all the things we have to show to you today. So things change pretty quickly around here. We just want to keep in the practice of talking about and showing you these changes as they occur in the dashboard to keep our clients informed um, and able to take advantage of the value that we're creating here every day for you. So let's see, we've got some questions here. Um, is this only available if you are signed up for a reconnect or is this available for everybody? It is available for people who have custom report wizard and it also is available if you just have a standalone reconnect tool. So that's something, right, that you can either have it, you already have, if you have custom report wizard. And if you don't have custom report wizard, then you can just um, purchase it separately for very low cost. Okay, though, another one about the reconnect tool. I'm glad you guys are interested in those. Um, it'll be there if you just reach out to your advisor and ask them or your account manager. If you've already got custom report wizard, you can reach out to your custom or to your account manager and they can and they can help you get that onto your homepage. And we have another question here about where are the focus reports located? And the focus reports are under a tab called focus that was previously called charts. So it's, I think it's the one right after the home page. Is that right, Kim? Yeah, it's on the second row of tabs. If you're looking over to the left, you always log in, you start on the home tab. It's the tab to, right to the right of the home tab. It's called focus. And if you click on that, there will be some widgets in there for you to play with. And depending on which um, products you've subscribed to, in some cases, you know, there's more than others, depending on whether you've subscribed to some of these features that we're talking about. Thank you. And we've got what other items can be added to the quick link box? This person, I, I'm only seeing symbols on reports. Is there anything else currently? Well, I don't know uh, what you mean by the symbols, but I'm definitely, you know, we want to help you out. So maybe we can talk afterwards if I'm not about to answer your question. But you can add reports and you can add tools, either tools from under the, um, I'm sorry, under the uh, account. The account field and also let's go back to that slide. Um, I can't think of the word, but it's the it's underneath the, the tools, any tool that you have under the accounts or the tool uh, tab. Is that right? Yeah, so if you have, if you have, like she was mentioning, if you have some reports that you r often run that you want to have quick access to, you can put those reports in there. If there's like the job store tab, if you're going in there and doing things often, you can create a quick link to that or to active jobs like seen in her example. Um, so there's, there's features, tools, reports that you can quick link to from that area. Yes, thank you for elaborating that. And Providing examples that help. It was under the under the tools tab and under the manage tab. Any tools there was what I was trying to say. And any reports. And um, I think the we're talking about um, back to the little uh, icon you have about the reports, the item number two on that screen. Um, I think some of those symbols are a little confusing. And um, the little link symbol that she was talking about, that's what creates the quick link. And then the, the item that looks like an X underneath, that expands so you can see the whole description of the report. So whatever that report does, it, it gives you a brief summary there. But if you click on that X, it'll expand that so you can see the full description of the report. 
And also okay. another thing that's been a little confusing from the reports tab is there used to be a run full report and then a full screen button. And the full screen button's gone away, but right above the run full report, and I know we don't have a screenshot of it, but I'm just going to kind of describe it to you. But right above the run full report button, there's like a little double picture frame little icon. And if you click on that, that's what makes the report go into full screen mode. So you can see it um, in a bigger frame on your screen. Good. And just to return back to that, this directional pad also, once it does get over here, I didn't realize it had a multi-purpose, but yeah, you can expand it to see a detailed description of the report. But also, once it gets over to your quick links, it, you can use it to drag it around. You can rearrange your buttons. Um, and then also, once it's on your quick links, it, it, this, this link here, the little link turns to an X, so you can remove it. That's once again, once it's over here. So I think we got some other questions, you, too. Yeah, if you hover over whatever tool or report you're looking for, you have to hover for just half of a second. That's when they appear. Because I see that question, somebody just ask, is like asking a question about the symbol does not come up for the tools. Um, oh, like manage round robin. It should. I think if you try hovering, somebody's asking a question about the symbols are not coming up. So you just try hovering over the report and, the, and it's just over the name like this. Just put your mouse over it. And it should make all these two buttons appear. And that will help you just. Click that one right there, the quick link, and it will add it. Okay. Do you anticipate being able to export any report into Excel? So I know we have we do have a lot of reports that have that functionality currently. So if you're talking about a specific report that you have that you would like to be able to export to Excel and it's not currently doing that. I think that you should, would write into your account manager and let them know what the name of that report is so that you can we can see about if we're able to add the functionality of exporting to Excel to that specific report. And let me elaborate on that just a little bit further. All of the reports that are like system reports that we assign to you that are kind of shared across our client base, those reports are written in a format that can't export to Excel automatically. But there is a way to get the data over into Excel. So as I was describing before, if you clicked on the option to make it full screen, once you're in full screen mode, you can highlight the contents of the report and then copy and paste the data over over into Excel and then manipulate it from there and work as you need to. So the, the only things that directly export into Excel today are the report wizard reports. So if you've built a report wizard report, you've seen that there's an option to export to Excel automatically. So those will, because they're, in a, they're built in a different reporting format than the shared version reports that are, are widely used across the client base, just to kind of help explain the difference between the two. Yeah, that does help. Thank you for that. And I don't see any more questions. We'll wait just a couple more seconds here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the webinar, and I hope that if you do have questions, you'll let us know. I'm going to move it back to the end through our thing. And I think that's all that we have. But if you have any, you think of any later, definitely just reach out to either Kim or me, and we'll help you. We'll get you an answer to whatever question you have. And I think that's it. So thank you everybody for joining. I hope you have a wonderful remainder of your week and a great night and we will see you soon. Thanks. Hey, thanks guys, bye.